Hey y'all, this is Moni. And this is Kat. Hey Kat. And, and this, this is, is the, the Fake Ass, ass Book Club. <laughs> Wait, can we both say it or no? Hey, hey, hey. Hey everybody. Welcome back. Welcome back. This is your girl Moni. And I'm Kat. Hey Kat. And hey. as as always, this is the Fake Ass Book Club. So Again. we are glad you're here, yeah. you guys. This is this is a fantastic and beautiful day, it first is. and foremost. And Dios. it's a fantastic book we're gonna talk about. So I'm not going to say that I'm excited because I say it every time. And then I say that I you're say it every excited? time. You're not excited? No, but I, well, yes, but I don't want to say it. you're excited. You, okay, fine. I'm <laughs> Just excited. say it. Fine. <laughs> I'm excited. Well, you know what? I'll say it. I'm excited. I know. So this is a book actually that we've both read before. Um, and the book is We're Going to Need More Wine by Gabrielle Union. Yay! Yay, deeply relatable oh content. Oh my God, I love her. <laughs> Listen, this is one of those books that you read and then it's like, um... Like, I just liked her so much more. Like, I already liked her. You know, She's I pretty likable. Yeah, She's she very charming. Is. She's very, yes, very, very much so. So I definitely am glad to revisit this. So I think I found like a little movie trailer statement just Ooh, to kind of entice yeah. you guys, get you as excited as me. Yeah, we're going to dry you in. Book. Yes. So this is, um, let's see here. Okay. In the spirit of Amy Poehler's Yes, Please. Lena Dunham's Not That Kind of Girl and Roxane Gay's Bad Feminist, a powerful collection of essays about gender, sexuality, race, beauty, Hollywood, and what it means to be a modern woman. So, oh, yeah. fair. Yes. So fair. I think that sums it up pretty good, you guys. But before we get into the book, we like to start every episode with a dedication. So um, we dedicate this episode to anybody taking time to listen. I know we have like probably 10 listeners now. Mm -hmm. Shout out to you guys for hanging in there with us. Hopefully you're still enjoying this. Um, and then also I wanted to dedicate this to my siblings and just sibling Aww. love in general. Um, it's a pretty special bond that you have and I'm super grateful for that. So I do want to dedicate nice. this episode to the app. What about you? Um, I would like to dedicate this episode to uh, healthcare workers, Ooh. specifically the ones who work in elder care. Like to share a little with the listeners. I'm going through end of life stuff with my grandmother and she's got dementia and she's in a facility right now. And those people work hard. That is a, I just go up there occasionally just to visit her, but it is uh, mentally and physically exhausting. And um, that's one of the things I liked about the book was she talked about with her own grandmother. She regrets one of the last things was just li her lying to her about like, you know, oh, yes, I sneaking around that. with boys and stuff. And, and especially because her grandmother too had dementia. So eventually she, you know, it's kind of a... It's it's something where people, if you're going through this, get help. Like, you're not supposed to be able to be okay going through this. It's really, really hard. So, um, yeah, just the fact that she was like, wow, there was a time she didn't even know who I was. So I wish when she did know who I was, I wasn't being such a lying piece of crap. But we right. do that when we're young. The best, yeah, the best version of yourself. Right. You'd like to leave that person with, probably. So. Yeah. Yeah, that's a beautiful dedication. I will say, yeah, shout out to you guys, too. And actually, you know what? Record scratch, right? You know what I mean? I actually wanted to. This is not a shout out. This is oh. not a dedication. Oh. This is actually a gigantic middle finger. Oh, you, man. I, and didn't this this is I didn't know we a did giant that. Fucking middle finger. Oh, all right. Okay. To Richard. All right. The owner of Classic Comfort. All right. And you know who you are, you unprofessional <laughs> bastard. <laughs> And What's going fuck on you. right now? <laughs> it's from the bottom of my heart. Okay, so wow, Richard, you done messed up. You're a piece of shit. You did. You know why? <laughs> All right. So anyway, we can move on. Okay. <laughs> on to more pleasant All right. okay, topics. Yeah, I'm gonna need to know what went on there yeah, I mean, later. Damn. But yeah, but I'll here we're here to talk about Gabby. Yes, Gabrielle. We are. Uh -oh, Union. Wait a uh, her Hold nickname on. was. I can't hear myself. Wait. Okay. Never mind. Okay. Came it came back. <laughs> never mind. I can't um, hear. I can't hear. A.K.A. Nikki. I thought that was fun that she, you know, we do a lot of times have nicknames when we're younger that don't follow us into our adult lives. But I mean, I know I have nicknames that, yeah, like I just know if someone calls me that, you've known me a really, really long time. It's a good time stamp, right? It like is. Like you can kind of figure it out is. like, okay, I've known um, this person She's forever. just relatable in so many ways, but um, yeah, I, I don't like know where her. to take it from here. Well, so let's talk about um, a little bit about her as a person. Okay. I mean, if people aren't familiar with her. I, I don't know how you, where you have been. I mean, she's Be, been, since the, was it the 90s? 
Probably like the 90s. Easily. Well, so Gabrielle but Union. I think Bring It On is a classic. <laughs> yes. Well, so she's been around for a long she's time. She's white if you famous. you don't know, now she is. Maybe she yeah. was a white famous back in the day. People do know her. Yes. So, okay. So let me she do like a little. She would be in Sophisticates Black Hair. Okay. First of all, <laughs> <laughs> I haven't thought about that. Uh, <laughs> particular uh, magazine for a hundred years. Those were like magazines in black um, salons and stuff, right? With all the hairstyles. I, mean, Is that I what think I'm thinking of? I think Walgreens sometimes too. But I like think I've ever seen those, but I never looked for them either. So oh yeah, I've always it. been really into hair, so yeah. I like hair I too. Back to Gabby. Up. My God, hold on. <laughs> you get me all sidetracked. <laughs> I can't. Cannot. <laughs> no. Okay, okay. So she's an American actress. She's mm-hmm. also a voice artist, an activist, and an author. And she started her careers in the 90, like, 90s. And she bagged an NBA player. She did. She really did. Good for you, girl. Yeah. Um, not that she even cared about doing that. Not so much. Kind of fun to it find was, out. yeah. She but, was just like, well, you're okay, cool. I mean, I've dated athletes. It's listen, fine. She's like, I'm out here in the, uh, listen, I'm out here in the streets, y'all. <laughs> he really courted her, so it was really cute. It was super cute. But she's been in movies, like you said. I mean, Bring It On is probably the most <gasps> iconic, iconic one from one. Be, yeah, from before. And then, too, I think her recent stuff is on um, Being Mary Jane. So yes. a lot of, yeah, that's where the white fame comes. No, is that? That's BT, on BT. People like that. I don't know. I feel like. I feel like a lot of stuff. It, I feel like entertainment is a lot less segregated than it used to be. Not that it isn't still, but like it's it's less segregated than it used to be. Okay, and she's is. been around long enough, too. And she's fabulous. So I think she has a she lot of is. universal I appeal. My favorite thing she's been in lately was Black Lady Sketch Show. Oh, my. Wait, is this on season two? Yeah. I haven't seen it. Oh, it's so good. Oh, I got to send you. You need to oh watch it Oh, my God. Tonight. I do need so, to watch uh, it. That character, I love that show. Uh, Dr. Hadassah Olinka Ali Youngman. Dr. Hadassah Olinka Ali Youngman, free PhD. Is that the one that? Um, the her tip. Yes, what is her? What's uh, Robin Thede? I was gonna say Heedy, Lord. Yeah, because it's Robin Thede's show. And she, and she plays Dr. Hadassah yes. and she's interviewing her and she was like, You work? She's like, yes. How does your husband handle this betrayal? Wow, wow. <laughs> she's too much. I cannot. That show is hilarious. And she's like, I'm happy to be a. But yeah, she's she's very it's funny. So good. Yeah, so I haven't seen her on that, but I'm sure she's fantastic. But she's also written four books, which I didn't know. So she has this one that we're covering. Um, we're gonna need more wine. And then she's got two children's books. I didn't know that. Oh my God, Shady Baby. <laughs> uh, welcome to the party. I think that was in 2020. And then she just had one this year, Shady Baby, which I'm sure is a nod to her daughter, um, Kavia, who is Brother adorable. Shady. She's I just, love her. She's just chunks of she's cuteness. She's a fun follow on Instagram, too. Both of them are. I really like um You know what I realized? I don't actually, them. I need to do that. You need I to don't find them her. like yesterday because yeah. yeah. they're both cute. And I then, um, that. And she's got a book coming out this year. Yes, I was the jinx. I'm going to need well, something stronger. Yes. Yeah. I, I think we should read it. We should definitely. Uh, two votes. Definitely. Right. Who's going to stop us, bitch? <laughs> okay. We do what we want around here. Yes. That's yeah, that's so on the list. Yeah. I think we're sufficiently caught up on her. So, um, but I mean, this book was kind of a collection of essays infused with like just her own humor and. I put autobiographical short stories. Yes. I think that that would be definitely um, accurate. And it kind of takes you back and forth between. So she grew up in um, her family's from Omaha, Nebraska. I did not know that. And I thought that was kind of interesting because that was um, Lacey. Yes. Um, From You'll Never Believe What Happened to Lacey ding, ding, ding. and Amber Ruffin. Yes. Uh, their experiences in Omaha. Yeah, it seems like it's a very uh, sort of racist place. It, it definitely. But so I'm saying, what episode was that one? <laughs> that was episode episode four. So okay. if you guys haven't listened to that episode, go back and check yeah. that one out. But do it, do it. it was a fantastic book also with that setting. But she went back and forth between California Aunt Pleasanton, right? Yes. That's a, what a, right. I was like, wow, you know, that was, there was barely any black folks anywhere called Pleasanton, I'm sure. Well, that's another thing that was relatable to me was, you know, her being in a predominantly white environment. White. Um, and trying not to stick out. Man. Um, that's, that's very, I don't know if you've ever been in a situation like that. I, mean, I know I, may I have. have. I mean, I once may or twice. Have. Once or twice. So, mm. um, that part is, um, uniquely, Relatable. Yes, it is. So, did you read read the book or what? No, what did I just you do? I listened to it on Audible. I, I did too. I, I did too both times. And, and she reads it, which is nice. And she's oh got such a great voice and delivery. She's so funny. She's hilarious. Like her, just her real quick delivery because she's so dry. I love it. And so it sneaks up on you. It's like, what is she just okay? Very deadpan. Okay. I love it. I love it. And I think too. I think. 
this is one of those books that I super enjoy listening to because of that. Her yeah. delivery was fantastic. She is an amazing actress, so her delivery is, like, on point. Boom. And I did say she was a voice actress. So you can tell yes. for the way that she delivered it. And so, but if you do read the paperback, what I Googled on Amazon, it said 272 pages. I think that's accurate. And then one of them said 266 pages. Listen here. So are they, somewhere sometimes they count the forward or whatever. Or not. Yeah. So it's somewhere it's like in that range. It's like almost 300 pages, guys. Right. There you go. And then it was a seven hour, 48 minute listen on um and it's Audible, easy and to read together. like it's it wasn't like possessing the secret of joy where it's like oh, i don't know what's going on right now but i'm sad and i need to put this down <laughs> put it down okay step this away. was more even though she deals with some really heavy themes mm-hmm. the book is very um and it's it doesn't feel oppressive no Sometimes narratives, um, and it's not like the things that didn't that happened to her weren't oppressive. Oh yeah, but the way that she's describing them and communicating them—that's what I think I put on here. She's an amazing communicator. I agree. I think so too. I really enjoy. And I always admire that quality. And I think it um, is a part of why she's successful. Like you can be like really, really talented at acting, but if you don't know how to work with people, like you only get so far. What are you laughing at? Nothing. You're so life what? is funny and weird. No. Okay. okay. That's Nothing. why I'm laughing. Okay, that's allowed. Um <laughs> Yeah, so it you guys, it was a it was a really good listen. I really, really liked it. I would say it was super honest. I, I liked all the details she put into her stories too. You know what I mean? Like I feel like the stories that she selected, I felt like I was there. You mm-hmm. know, and it was and it was very conversational. And you can just tell how smart and and, and insightful she okay, is. Okay, because she was a big dork. I enjoyed I that too. That. And she yes. was talking about her school days, like oh, when she man. was younger, and the fact that she was just this oh, little man. bean pole with yes. just teeth and elbows. And I'm like, once again, very relatable. Where it's just kind of like, yeah, it's like I'm, I'm an out awkward here. black girl out here right now. Like that's <laughs> what this is, and everyone knows. But I like books. <laughs> okay. And, and being, being right. Being first. <laughs> and being first. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I don't know. Was there anything you didn't like? I feel like we're gushing so super hard well, right now. Well, I'm sorry. I mean, I liked oh, it. Um, all right. So, okay. get over it. All right. I'm trying to think of um, something I didn't like. Um that I did not like. I, you know what? Uh, I did read a review because sometimes I'll look on Goodreads and just see what other people thought about it. And this one person was like, I feel like she kept mentioning that she was famous. Like she was throwing it up in our faces and like, we know you're rich and famous. You don't have to keep saying it. And, and man, I did not get that. <laughs> maybe that's the voice or the narrative she put in her head because she read the book. And maybe that's, you know how, if it's she had different. listened to it, maybe I feel like it could have, she could have translated that a bit but differently. That's her, but that's also her experience. It's her reality. Like, yeah, like it, it, it informs everything. It's like when people yeah. like, stop talking about black stuff. It's like, well, as much there as is, I'd like to. There's just stuff and it, I'm black. It informs so. my experience. So yeah. just like. Are you, be, is everything okay? Yeah, I okay. think so. All right. Like just like being famous. <laughs> I'm sure that really informs a lot of her life. So. How terrib- yes. Well, I mean, yes. I mean, you can't. <laughs> You're mad at somebody for talking about their experience and how they experience. Yeah, life. I, I can't give it. the only part. So. I mean, my I mean, it's not like I made I disliked the way it was written or anything. But my least favorite part of the book was when she was raped. Uh, so uh, that part, because yeah. actually, when I read the book, I had forgotten that it happened to her. Oh, you did? Yeah. I so when that came that up, one. I was like, oh, crap. And then I was like, oh, that's right. Because she does a lot of, you know, advocacy for yes, uh, awareness and mentorship assault, and like. uh, recovery and mm-hmm. things like that. So I was like, oh, yeah, I do kind of remember that. But I don't think I ever really knew the story. And um, I don't know. We have to get. We don't have to unpack the whole story right no, now. But that but was yeah. That, that was, was a really part terrible. that, and that's from. I'll probably put in a true warning for the. You know, like you should probably know going into it is going to cover a sexual assault. Yeah, and it's pretty great. You know, she talks about it in detail. So, um, yeah. So, what would you say were the relative, like relative, not relative, Lord, relevant? Is the yes, ding 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 ding. Relevant. I would say relevant themes. You want to try it again? Okay. What would you say? <laughs> And action. No, I'm just playing. Um, the relevant themes. No, say the book. whole thing. No. Okay. It okay. Fine. I will. Sense. Okay. I will. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, Kat, what would you say are the relevant? <laughs> okay, Kat, what would you say are the relevant themes of this book? Thank you for asking. <laughs> I would say that the relevant themes of this book were colorism, racism, damn it, feminism, God, damn it. ambition. Uh, entertainment, media, industry, and marriage and relationships. Woo, yes. And I think 
because the way that the story is, I mean, she does go back and forth, you know, in different sections of her life. So she mostly starts in her childhood and moves forward. But there's times where she kind of dips back and forth. Um, and she's telling several different stories. So I do think that there's there's a lot of things, a lot of themes. But the things that I felt like kind of were woven throughout the whole book definitely was colorism um, about code switching was a big mm. thing because that happened throughout her life. And I'm sure still happens. If you don't know what code switching is, I mean, it's basically you show up to work um, as your professional self because you know that you can't walk in as your authentic self as far as being a person of color. So you change the way you speak and you make yourself a little bit more palatable for the audience. And you don't want to offend anybody with your blackness. You you know, you iron your hair straight and you show up and you, you know, you just, you minimize your blackness in spaces. So, um, and I think most black people can relate to this because usually you are kind of transitioning in and out of spaces that either, People don't look like you at all and don't have your same experience. So you don't, you know, you're always trying to mitigate not standing out so much that it's so uncomfortable. But then also, too, um, when you spend so much time doing that, when you're around people who look like you and you're still kind of, you know, you still have some of that energy, you're getting called out on the other end. So I liked that she kind of spoke to that when it came to, you know, Hollywood, even now um, and throughout her childhood. So yeah, it is a popular it is a common skill and tactic of successful black people. Like yeah. most black people who make it to certain levels do know how to code switch. Yeah, it's a very valuable tool, I would say. It is. Um, I know you don't watch Big Mouth, but they had like a whole song about code switching. Really? It's called code yeah. switching. It's, it's a good one too. Really? Okay. Um and and the fact too cuz I actually did write down about code switching and also made a note about the dual consciousness uh. that that sort of produces because you do have to um, balance the fact that like, yeah, I do have to sort of be this way so I can pay my bills. But right. but also that's how I really feel about stuff. Yeah, man. And then, too, I liked she talked a lot about or I guess I got the feeling that as a younger person, you know, there's just low self-esteem issues. There's, you know, um, you don't like yourself. And again, like we've talked about this in previous episodes, not seeing yourself fully because of your environment and how you're reflected back to yourself. And so just learning self-love. So I really, really, really liked that. And one of the things she brought up, too, was interesting, was that the fact that she doesn't look like her mom. Oh, yeah. I did want to talk about that. Let's she, talk about let's that. Talk let's talk about, about that. So that kind of takes us into the colorism, okay. I guess, conversation. But, yeah, I want you to share what, what part you liked or thought was interesting about that. If Or I can start. I mean, you are chewing on a... What is that? Is that dessert? This is a chocolate mousse tart. Yeah, let's take a little pause real quick. We have some snacks today <laughs> that are delicious. Mm -hmm. So we've got, those are chocolate tarts. And what's the other one? That one chocolate looks, mousse tart. Chocolate mousse. Excuse, mm -hmm. excuse me. Please get it right. Chocolate mousse. What's that one right there? That one, look, that don't look chocolate. The mm, strawberry. That one, mm, it's ra that's raspberry chocolate. Vanilla. Tart. Oh, see, it tricked me. And then there's a key lime. Ooh, I want that one. Where's okay. that at? It's right here. That okay? I need that one okay. in my life. And then, then we got some sushi, mm -hmm. and I made some little We're real crab. Man, ooh, I like that it. That was one of the things I was finding too when she was listening to Make Her Happy, and it was imitation crab. And her oh my god! Like, wait, yes. <laughs> I love that. We got to go back to that. Mm -hmm. We got to get back to that part mm -hmm. about the crab. Colorism. But yeah, the color is important. Well, wait, we have these uh, egg rolls. Oh, oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, they're egg rolls. Okay, now we can move on. We have egg rolls. <laughs> Anyhow, um, that, you know, that was interesting to me, that aspect. So her mom is a fair, complected black person and she's darker. And, you know, she always just grew up looking at her mom thinking, oh, she's so beautiful. But her mom kind of made it a concerted effort to... I don't know. Like she well, wanted to be with a dark skinned said, person, yeah, like so that my kids are dark. Kids. Yeah, because she felt like she had certain issues based on the fact that she was light skinned. You know, being called piss colored or. But that's the thing too. Like if you're light, you, there's so many things where you're too light or too dark. You're never the right amount of blackness. No, and I know we've talked about this because this is a fucking <laughs> thing, man. Like people go so hard for this, and I I feel like I have the same thing with my daughter because I am a fair black person and my daughter is uh, brown skinned. And, you know, even from the time that she was three, I know that she knew that we look different. So, mm -hmm. like, we have conversations about am I black or not? You know what I'm saying? Like, both of my kids are, are like, are you black? Um, <laughs> it's like, because we, we've got some questions. Right. And we learned about colors in school today. And you don't want this crayon right not. here. OK, I, 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 I just got to say you're missing the mark here. So. Hmm. On top of that, just being confusing, I also feel like 
you know, I remember her being in preschool in particular, and there was another little black girl in the class. And I'm in the class talk, talking to the teacher, and the girl was explaining to somebody that she was with a girl named Maya, and it wasn't my daughter. So instead of saying, not like, not my classmate, not her, not, you know, Maya in our school, she was like, no, not not black Maya. Oh. And I'm looking like, hold Oof. up, I'm about to fight Oof. a preschool. <laughs> no, just, I mean, it. it's sad because I know that you're already making a difference. Like you're already yeah. saying it like the word black is burning your tongue. Like you're already yeah. saying it like it's an like, insult. Oh, and you're one. four, three, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like you're in preschool. So I was like, wow. So th- these messages you get internalized, that gets internalized um, from the time that you're very young. So, and I remember that too, cause that was, um, I've heard people say that before. It's never been a thing with me, but like, you know, black people who'd want to stay out of the sun cause they don't want to get darker <gasps> remember or the, the story skin she bleaching told? cream and stuff. Yeah. With About the, the boy. She was, was doing like, like a mentorship the shade and stuff. Y'all, she was doing a mentorship and, and, you know, she was like taking walks sometimes can help you loosen, you know, kids up and get them talking and stuff. And he kept sprinting between like the shade of the trees when they were walking. And she finally was like, what are you doing? And he was like, I'm not trying to get no I'm not trying to get no blacker. And it's like, hold on a second. You're literally running from your blackness right now. That's what's happening. But, you know, when you see that all the gr- all of the the dudes that are pulling girls in this school, you know, look like, I don't know, Brad Pitt Wait, or some no. shit. How about Kevin Marshall? Who the hell is that? That was like the guy that she liked. Um, like it was one of the boys she had a crush on. Like it was like her first big crush. Oh, that she, guy that was light skin. Mm-hmm. And he had green eyes. Oh my god, it's and such she a was like, She symbol. just couldn't believe that he, he liked, liked her. her. Like she would have done anything. She was like she went back to Omaha for Christmas just so she could kiss him. Oh my god! And I remember that part because I I really point of writing it down because it's like yeah, when you're really into somebody, it's like I'm coming yeah, back I'll go for to you. Omaha. Li- well, and then. <laughs> That's what I'm saying, though. Like, you're putting your worth, your self-worth, you're evaluating your self-worth based on who is interested in you. Right. And I think as a woman, a lot of the time, you know, because your your value can be tied into, like... Your physical attractiveness. Your physical attractiveness and, you know... um, Because that's what she said. She felt like dark-skinned girls like her shouldn't be pulling dudes like that. Like that. So when she was, it was like, bitch, bitch, That is. And how about the fact that, like, she dated Jason Kidd in high school? That's a flex. She did. That's That's funny. That's way better than any of my boyfriends from high school. God, man, that was, like, one of my favorite (laughs) stories in the book. (laughs) That was cold, though. That breakup. Oh, my God. It was cold. And then... (laughs) He should... (laughs) But, I mean, listen, you go into things you go out of things how you come into them you know what i'm saying she went in with That's some bad karma true. so because she he had a girlfriend when they mm-hmm. first started talking and um yeah and she was very unceremonial that was just like uh-huh. a sex with kings where it's like mm-hmm, mm. the price of success is constant vigilance yes it is Get and that throne taken don't real think quick. that he won't leave your ass too you ain't that oh I mean, that was terrible too to be broken up like in front of his whole team the they're whole shouting team. i'm sorry it, that was crazy that was extra crazy um so yeah jay's <laughs> We can talk about that story, but the reason, the other reason why I really like the Jason Kidd story, so she's taking us through this story because she was at... Oh, should we explain who Jason Kidd is for the younger people? He is a basketball player. In the oh. National Basketball (laughs) Association. Here he was. He was a basketball player. He was referenced in a Nelly song. Was he? Um, It's getting hot in here. I'm just kidding like Jason. Uh, Oh. Unless you're going to do it. Hold on. First of all, he's now a coach. He's now an NBA coach. We're wow. hearing from the sidelines here. I did not know that. I, first of all, <laughs> I mean, I knew he played basketball. I didn't know there that. There you go. And that was it. Okay. <laughs> That's all. I don't know what team he played for anything. But also, he's there's really the interweb. Good. He was good at basketball. Yeah. And he's very fair complexed. I feel like that yes. should go. That needs yes. to be noted. No. And also needs to be noted that she used to get Jason Kidd spelled out on her fingernails with a heart. So that there were 10. Listen, but when you go that hard. That's so real, though. That that little detail. Because I was like, yeah, that's that's also. it will. It's like you're claiming your territory. A little it's bit like where it's you going super and hard and we're going to, yeah, I listen. wear his number when I'm playing. They were so corny. I mean, it was definitely very <laughs> high, high school, school, but this story came up because she was on the set of one of her projects and it was delayed. So they were telling each other stories and somebody asked her to tell the story where of um, who hates Wait, you the most I in the world. I want to know that about you. Who hates you more than I don't know, but I'm about to, I don't, I got to think about that. I have no idea. <laughs> I'd have to really think about, okay. oh, I can think of somebody, but I'm going to double back. Okay. <laughs> but so, and this story is fucking hilarious because this girl, was it Quishan? Quishan. Hated her fucking guts. guts. And it was because she stole, I air quotes stole, stole. you can't steal. No. I mean, like, clearly he was for the streets, but <laughs> he, um, she basically 
hated, like the girl didn't even hate her. It was like the girl's cousin hated yeah. her, Keyshawn. Yeah, one of uh, Jason Kidd's side piece. Jason, so Jason Kidd's ex-girlfriend's cousin. Well, was it his gr- ex-girlfriend or his new girlfriend? Because I thought that's who he no. left. Okay, I uh-uh. got confused. No, no. It we'll was, go with your thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, okay. it was because he broke up with... He broke oh. up with her to be with her. So that's why I think she just had didn't issues. like her. Listen, I'm talking about followed her around, just showed up, popped up. I mean, the stories are fucking it was, hilarious. It was like, like I hilarious. know you didn't watch Eek the Cat. Like that cartoon. I remember hearing about and Sharky, it. And Sharky no. the Shark Doll. Nah. Like those always stalking him. No, man. That's what I pictured when Kusha. It was it, listen, anyone who's listening to me watch that, you know what I mean. Cause Shark that was all he was focused on was just fucking, fucking up. Ika. It's like, oh, that sounds familiar i know i don't think i watched it like that i do it was the same thing every time though yeah so it's like, it yeah, was different. pretty dumb yeah oh my gosh <laughs> but yeah the story is hilarious you guys have to check that like that was one of my favorite um, I, I would agree chapters, that was one actually. of my favorites as well for okay, a lot so, of reasons so. so who hates you most in the world who hates me most i would probably say myself <laughs> oh no i mean probably i'm like the meanest probably to myself <gasps> Um, I know. And I, we need to, that we need to turn that around. That sounds bad. Okay. We need um, to make you your best friend. I get, well, now, I, I mean, we're, we're cool. We cool, we cool now. <laughs> but it has been a thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, okay. so I can relate to her wow. in that way, too, because it doesn't matter where you fall. Like, you always fall in those pockets of, like, not mm. that not enoughness. Mm. And I have felt that strong, you know what I'm saying, like, throughout my life. So I do think um, I have been somebody who's so, been a mega mega fucking hater in my own life so um but outside of myself shit i don't know i mean no i, I think that that was the answer you know i, yeah. didn't, I didn't put any caveats on it oh, okay well, what so about you? um oh i'm sure one of my exes <laughs> and one of them, <laughs> one, one of them, one of them it's like pick one it's probably all the same amplitude oh my gosh um, okay. um no i'm trying to think now of like um well, maybe oh boy, Richard. No, what was his fucking name? Let me get that right. Oh, yeah, Richard's bitch ass from Classic Comfort. He might hate my guts now because when he sees that long ass three page letter that I sent to his fucking company, biatch. <laughs> I hope they pull you oh as a my contractor. God. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, I digress. This is like Dre Day, man. It's man, like, that was some fuck best, Richard man. from Classic right. Comfort. <laughs> yeah, you know, like, like, fuck your mom. Just like hit him up. Right. Like, you yes. want to be down with comfort? Fuck you too. Man, I'm going to tell you right. <laughs> listen, Tupac vibes, okay? I'm sending them to you right now. Um, yeah, he probably hates me now. That's wild, though. Yeah, I usually, it's it's so foreign to me because I usually can't get to that level of anger that to sustain it that long. That's it. okay. So I'm being told the three mad. pages is it was a long a big time. Mad. Yeah, it was, and it was worth my time too. So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I believe it. And actually, it was very professionally done. Let's be for real. Like I, <laughs> I can say I can do a hit 'em up style on this fucking podcast, but also it was like there was no other way Here, for me except start, for to write like, a letter. First off, nope, it was to whom it made concern. Okay, do okay. make concern. That's first how off. that shit started. Yeah, it's like. But this anyway, gonna, this man, gonna fucking, be... we ain't talking about this anymore. Okay. Man, fuck this nigga. He's getting too much energy. Yeah, man, he's getting too much. Okay, so oh, here's another thing I really liked about the book the sex positivity she's, let's go gabby you're yes, out here in these streets yes sis. i she, like that too the, the um she was a big advocate of autonomy which is always like one that. of the things yeah we like autonomy around here um man when they got the story together of her one friend who was pregnant and was like okay we're getting you an abortion tonight wow like, they got and for together. the record this, the, she wanted it so it wasn't like they were forcing her <laughs> no she was just broke they were like they got the money no, the I transportation know. got her in and out those are the got kind some of friends condoms. you need some action oriented yes. friends to help you make wait I loved it too that she grabbed all the condoms on the way out though poured all of them in her bag like <laughs> we need all of these because this can never happen again that was very responsible but no Shut I love the fact that in her mind she was going through like she didn't want it's embarrassing when you're that age clinic workers to see her getting like condoms. the condoms and everybody <laughs> here has clearly been fucking so it's not even a it's not a I mystery I call it leaving with my little brown bag of shame <laughs> listen you know but it's like it's real why like, is it shameful I hate then. that but well, that's why I said now. that's why I like the sex positivity because I didn't grow up with sex positivity I grew up with like I'll get fucked up if I find condoms on you like that was the thing right, too like where she was talking conscience. about like because I remember like I used to be real hostile like or fear based like towards condoms because it's like oh no because that's sin a signal that so I you know so if if I don't have those then I won't have sex it's like no you'll just end up I feel like too though it's still like that I think 
so the episode that where we had Naya for possessing the secret of joy, that was like the first episode, um, episode 11, actually, I, I feel like I don't know that we've made a lot of strides in that area because I still feel like, you know, she didn't have a lot of information. That's what we were learning. Yeah. And still, you know, you saying to her like, hey, I wished I would have had somebody to talk to talk to about because you get really inaccurate information or incomplete information. Oh, how about the fact that she thought her vagina was her clitoris? Boom. It took me back to the possessing but, secret of joy because of that. But at least with like Naya and the generation they can Google it. Like You can. You do have access. Because there was uh, so many times where I really was like okay, is this normal? Because right. this is weird. It's like I've got no notes on this. <laughs> yeah, I'm like is it, is it supposed to look like this? I don't even know. So it's like, yeah, it would have been nice to, but like I said, it, everything's terrible. Every 30 percent of everything's terrible. So even with the access, to the information, it also means that you're. I, you know, I think about all those girls who like get their nudes leaked and stuff like that. So, mm-hmm. like, would I, you know, maybe want to trade in having all the information at the world at my fingertips for the fact that naked pictures of me might get out? Like, it's like a wow. All <laughs> right, can never make that choice. <laughs> like, wait a minute. It's like God like Shit powers got real. and everybody, you know, see something that I just meant for one person. Yeah, you know, like that to me is, and it's it seems so obvious. Like after the fact, because I remember when I was in barber school, and that was like when um the uh, picture phones were coming out, like where you could picture send. phone and picture phone. <laughs> <laughs> that sounded really old. That's when the picture phones came out, and uh, <laughs> like funny. before we were just used to the we talkies. Just, uh, <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, my <God. laughs> oh my god! But that's how it goes. Oh like yeah, they're the what would you call them? Like the photo the, when because it was good. I like it. That's funny. <laughs> camera phones. They, yeah, okay, that's that probably the sound it, better. Camera like, phones you know, came out. Phones. Yes. No, because they um because uh, they weren't smartphones yet. Yeah, true yeah, that. they were just camera phones. And I remember at barber school, the good they would be passed around pictures of naked. Girls that had sent them pictures. Check this out. <laughs> <laughs> Check her out, man. It's like, okay. Well. And so I'm just like, oh, you know, like this poor girl. And I'm like, you know, it, it was like, okay, so no. The to trust self. that people put into niggas, though, is always kind of like, <sighs> that's just, it's. I could. I feel like I admired in a way, because it's like good for you. Like you have trust inside your life. Like I have. I. I don't. Like, I'm, I'm not sending nigga. you a goddamn thing. I wish nigga. I might what? send you a goddamn picture that you could a, screenshot like and save like, forever. I'll send them a pick of somebody else's titties. Man, it's like, seriously, here's some titties for you. right? I'm just gonna draw them like a W with two dots in the middle. Like, bitch, check those out. Okay, those were. They, that's what Make you Make sure get they're to pointing see. down. You know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little down, not too down. But yeah, you know what I mean? Like, I just, I mean, I don't think I have that kind of trust to be sending pictures out to no, guys. No, definitely not now. No sh- I mean, but right. if I had been 15, maybe. Man, I'm so glad we did not have that technology. Yeah. But I also hope that 15, I wouldn't have, but I can't say. I didn't say, yeah, know, like, what Ooh, my vulva not. was either. Well, so, see, that's what I mean. Like, that book was the thing that you were saying you learned a lot about terrible. your anatomy. So, I like that, too, about Gabby in the book where she's talking about, like, when she was first, when she first got her, oh, just the dr- the dread of getting her period. Like, it was like a horror movie and it was coming for everyone in the classroom. Picking and people And she's off. finally, yeah, and then she's like, and then finally it was my turn. And she was, like, trying to dun, stick a dun, tampon, dun. like, into her. Because. And Ouch. I like to do that. She Eureka. admitted she was a, a, a she was an early masturbator. Um, oh, she did. Yeah, yeah she and did. I was like, okay, she cool. Just drop that down. And she was like, so I knew from jump, like the clitoris was the that's spot where the to fun be. is. <laughs> but she thought that was all there was, and it's like, oh, there's more stuff up in there. Yeah, man. I mean, Coolsies. I do think it can, it does take a while before you're like, oh, okay. okay. I got the full like, picture I need to of what's figure going out on. what's going on here. Um, I, I feel like crazy. I should save the other vagina story for at the end because oh, it was oh, really fantastic. A vagina story. There needs to be special music for that. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but I do, I do like her sex positivity and I liked how she said that when people give, like when she's giving advice, she's always like, fuck, 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 fuck. Just fuck. Fuck everybody. Like, you're only young once. Like, don't, like, you know what I mean? Like, she's like, even when you're fun. taking time for yourself you can still have sex you like know. it doesn't have to be a full-blown relationship she was like sometimes there's um another body can help cushion the fall that is what she said so i mean i think um 
I mean, do what's best for you, of course. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, for but me, that's it. Just sounds exhausting. But you don't hear people saying that, though. You don't. You know, you, I, don't. It's, you no. don't say it out loud because you already know if you're encouraging women to, you know, what I'm saying, enjoy their sexuality, you're gonna be viewed a certain way. So oh, yeah. I, I do think that all that hoeing, you know, whether or not you decide to fuck, 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 um, <laughs> that that is on just you. Just know that Gabby's on your side. She, yeah, she said she gave you the green light, so you know, <laughs> I mean, you can get out there and do your thing. But yeah, I, I liked how she was able to kind of find so the one of the stories that I really liked was when she got invited to do that essence she was picked as um oh the fearless fierce female the, yes the fearless and uh and fierce she was like female. no That's guys I'm lying right I mean you feel fraudulent she's thinking oh I'll go up there for a couple seconds thank you you know fantastic and they're like it has to be five minutes this is a five TED talk baby five minutes <laughs> that's a long ass time to just stand up talking you know so it is and, it, and to me it was a point where in her life she started to kind of be honest and tell her truth and and I liked where she admitted like I was afraid that if I was honest like people wouldn't like me I know that's, and that's what so it comes down it to every single time like you just you keep certain things back or you modify yourself whether it's to fit in or um it informs a lot of what you do and your actions and stuff like that so I liked because I don't I mean at this point she was well into her adulthood I mean I think she was you know, well into her career. So I just liked seeing that kind of like aha moment because this kind of um, transitions into the story you were wanting to tell about her therapy thing. Because <laughs> so she does, she finally does it, right? And she's like writes this fantastic five minute thing and like people are just like crying in the audience and it, she's really connecting because that's what happens when you're telling your truth. A lot of the time people can relate because they feel the same way. They're just not saying it. And so, you know, she was like, even Oprah's like mouth was open. Like, and so I, I feel like, you know, she's like the guru of feelings and I know, definitely self like her skin exploration. Is so great. How do you have problems? List, it, see, and that's just <laughs> it. You just, you, you never, you can never imagine what people are going you know through internally. You know what's so funny? Like, I remember her um, like being interviewed for like on um, some magazine. I was always magazine so let's say it was 17 okay and um they were just asking her about her skincare routine because she's always had this great skin Fantastic. and she said she just used dove okay and ever since then i've always used dove just it's like i'm trying to be like you i'm trying to be yeah. like yeah and it was good advice Fantastic i was like skin. she wasn't even sponsored back then it was just mm -mm. like yeah i just used dove i'm like that's okay i'm gonna start Keep using it simple because we were using dial it Ew, was dial's the worst isn't settle it settle down like, like they're super strong. It was. It wasn't working for me. Burn I was like, I need <laughs> so I was or ivory. We'd either have ivory, ivory soap or dial. Okay. And neither one was serving my needs. So I was like, <laughs> I'm gonna do what this chick with the really great skin's doing. Thank and you. um thanks, she Gabrielle. Is, and I mean she's aging like fine wine. Yeah, I mean, she like, looks let's talk really about great. It. She is uh, is she's almost how old is she? I don't even want to know because I don't. I do. I'm nosy. I okay. need to see how old she is. But yeah, I okay, mean, well, she's holding up well. Because yeah. I think this ties into because one of my favorite quotes from the book is a Carrie Fisher quote. And if you guys don't know who Carrie Fisher is, she was Princess Leia from Star Wars. Um. So, yes, she um, she's a writer, too. And one of her quotes is stay afraid, but do it anyway. Oh, What's that. important is the action. You don't have to wait to be confident. Just do it, and eventually the confidence will follow. Oh my gosh, yes, that is, and that's a word. the whole thing too. Because it's like I think we do try to wait until we don't feel afraid, and that never happens. Man, the fear is always there. So <sighs> you just have to be kind of like, okay, well, we're going into this with fear. <laughs> <laughs> He's he or she's the, it's the feelings there, and, and that's uh, literally what courage is. Because mm -hmm. courage isn't the absence of fear; it's just doing it anyway. I learned that yep. from Harry Potter. Harry Potter, yes. and that's exactly what I. Told my children and I and it is important for me to try to demonstrate that to them Ooh, harder. Um, which is yeah sometimes harder, <laughs> harder when it's saying you. it <laughs> yes it is but I mean honestly I mean we've probably said this before that I mean honestly this whole experience that we're doing right now like terrified to death to actually like oh okay be on a podcast talk about stuff and people and might listen my real and hear thoughts. yeah like you know, some of them are terrible there, some of them are you know, and some of them aren't. But also, you know, there's always that fear. But I'm glad that we did it anyway. French here. Right. To you that. Lift it Ting. up. Yes, Lift man. it right on up. That was fantastic. She's 48, by the way. <laughs> cool. She looks amazing. Cool, cool, cool. Okay. She's taking very good care of herself. Yes, she is, man. I, I'm, I'm not mad at her. Um. Oh, so the the therapist story. So, like, after that, there was some lady that she kept running into, right? Oh. <gasps> That she was like okay, running from. Yes. Where she, she was finally, like, when you're ready, come talk to me. Mm -hmm, so she had like a really, she had like this personal low. And she was like, I think, because 
she was like, I think this is what she was talking about. So she reached out to this woman and they had a, a session where they were doing like a boxing thing. And she was just making her box until she could name three things that she liked about herself. What was it? Or just three things she loved. That makes her happy. Make her ha- okay, thank yeah, you. Yeah, because she couldn't even leave list her dog because she felt she didn't deserve it. Listen, that's so messed up. It is, but I'm, I know that feeling. Like, I've talked to you about stuff like that yeah. where it's like I haven't even wanted to do nice stuff because I'm like, I don't feel like I deserve it. Like, have I, I earned know, this? Oh, that's so and fucked it's up. Like, yeah, but then at a certain point, like, I had to actually make myself, like, write lines. I am good enough. And like, yeah, like little, <laughs> I'm good enough. I'm, I'm smart enough. And, and gosh darn it, people, people like, me. like me. But no, like I just had to write out like, um, for some reason, I do have a, a hard time like um, allocating money for like vacation, mm, like just mm, pleasure mm, activism. I've been concentrating on it, though. That's good. Like where it's like I'm making concerted effort to make this enjoyable. But to like get to a point where I wasn't stressed out, like I had to like force myself into a space where it's like, why are you fighting enjoying this? Yeah. You dumb bitch. Well, and it's (laughs) you stupid. Well, first of all, that's terrible self talk. Right. But sometimes it goes there. That's what I'm saying. Like we are not always nice to ourselves and it's not cool. (laughs) But it was funny. Like I think, you know, you have those heavy moments where you're exploring those topics and then what ends up being funny is the fact that the three things that she ended up naming, like it took a minute, but it was all food. It was all food, (laughs) which I actually stand for. Like that was hilarious. Her, her therapist is like, okay, all these are food based. We'll get back to that. We will revisit also because she did. She mentioned the imitation crab, and her, her therapist is like, not even like the real, real thing. Crab, though. And she's like, why well, do you just feel she's like, like I just like it? It's so nice. much of the it's best the good parts. parts. Yeah. It's like, I remember though. I remember the first time I did have imitation crab. I loved it. Mm. Weirdly enough, I remember I like a friend much. at school, like she had some in her lunchbox and she gave me one of the little fake like crab little sticks stick. or whatever. And I was just like, okay, I fucks with this. I was like, mom, uh, put this on the list. We can, we can eat Did these. Did she start eating them? Yeah, Bring she them? started eating them and stuff like that. But also at that time, I hadn't had real crab. Mm. Now that so you've had it, real crab, yeah, can you eat as, it now? Uh, I mean, I can't. Like in like Prefer the, not to. Um, like grocery store sushi. Okay. Yeah, I guess it's when not they put bad in like, like the salad, you know. I just I don't know. I don't love it. You I know don't what I mean? love it. It's not one of my things that makes me happy. What makes me happy <laughs> is fresh caught Actual crab from crab. the ocean. Didn't you have crab this morning? Did you tell me that? I did. Inside I put some in my omelet. Oh my gosh. How decadent of you. It was very decadent, yes. Way to go. <laughs> and I put it on top of a pepperoni pizza. Listen. Okay. I'm not well. I was going to say no judgment. There's a little judgment. Oh, I'm just not going to say it out loud. But I like use fresh basil for my garden and some gruyere. Ooh, was, I love fresh basil. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Stuff. So as you can I mean, I, we love food. <laughs> so the fact that she named the we food was like, We just went to a real happy serious? place. Yes, We went man. to a real happy place. So, that yeah, was that hilarious. was, uh, well, no, I was, uh, I wanted to take it back to the other vagina story. Okay. Where she was talking about how she was too, when, you know, she is famous at this point. I know, like, you know, it was one of criticism. She keeps mentioning she's famous. But it affects your <laughs> Life. Like she doesn't want to yeah. be the famous person seen by in some monastat at Walgreens. Right, she got like, a yeast infection. That can be like a front page thing on some yeah. blog. Like Gabrielle Union's vagina <laughs> is is yeasty. inhospitable. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, it's, it's an imbalance of the candida of whatever. Whoever, yeah. yeah. Like she's just like trying to, you know. Like she said, you don't get smashed for the weekend. She had her slam piece. Her slam piece. That she had come to visit. And she's like, oh, my God, this is going to ruin my weekend. What can I do? And literally (laughs) ends up shoving yogurt into her vagina instead of just going into Walmart and being seen buying a product. I am mortified. Like, I was like, "Okay, so now. And then she's just there like, I got to make some changes. Well, she walks into the Walgreens to get the monostat. And then she ends up being like, yep, thirsty. You know what I mean? (laughs) Or no, she she laughs and then come back. She Twizzlers, had Twizzlers that's right. first. And, and then, then she left. was like, oh, Twizzlers, this is just what I need. And she's like, oh. Then she called her friend, like, what am I supposed to do? She was like, you need cranberry juice. Like, so she goes in there and buys a huge thing of cranberry juice. And it was like cran apple, which is it's not just, the same thing. It's not thing. juice, it's, it's juice cocktail. It's a cocktail, it's lots of sugar, it's which, sugar, which yeast loves sugar. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, um, <laughs> yeah, you don't want to do that. So she chugs that whole thing. And then she's like, no, bitch, you need, you, you need some yogurt. So she had to put it, she put it in a straw. Listen, I was like, first, don't. <laughs> no, she went to McDonald's and stole a oh, straw. Oh, Jesus, yes, she did. I forgot about that. Yeah. Take the wheel. I cannot. Yeah. So, yes, he. I was like, these are, these are shenanigans. These are sh- Just to, like she said, avoid being a female human who got a uh, goddamn... Got too yeasty. Yeast infection. Yeasty which, boys. I mean, you can... Ew. <laughs> ew. 
Okay, we got to stop saying the word uses. This is so but it, it, it painted a very vivid picture. It did, man. The details. It was a very the real details. vibe because then it is something when you when you're a busy person, like a lot of times you don't have a lot of time for a quick link up. So when you do like two busy people find time to hook up and then a yeast, inf- it's like, yeah, I need to solve this problem immediately. Seriously. So that was deeply relatable. I thought that was funny or too. That was just like, some really uh, good stories, y'all. I mean, I'm talking about I'm had really me laughing out loud. I don't know, because I didn't oh, know. Can we talk about too the fact that she gets a lot, when we were in Bahamas, the driver driving us back, he was actually very critical of her and Dwayne for um, their support of Zion. There, uh, um, really, yeah. Why, why are we all talking about that? That's weird. Talking to the cab driver, and she was well, yeah, talking, but I, that's odd that, that came up. Celebrities, he brought it up. Mm. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> so, I was it just, was yeah, we <laughs> got into, yeah, people get really bothered oh by this. I think they've handled it in a very beautiful way. So, I it's another thing that I admire about her, and um. Her husband. Dwayne. Yeah, they're cute, man. I like them as a I couple. I do, too. They're fun to watch, and it's... Um, and their kids seem smart and well-adjusted. Well, that story about when they were in the neighborhood and she was... Stop. <laughs> so that was the one. <laughs> Stop. No. Um, are we segueing out of this story? Yeah. Okay, so we're done with that story. Because <laughs> that is a good one, because it goes under the umbrella of racism as, the, as one of the themes, I guess. But yeah, tell the. I wanted you to tell the whole story, because I did want to talk about this one so um she's basically talking about just different encounters she's had with um basically being a black person in predominantly white spaces and living in a predominantly white affluent area a lot of times if they see black people or brown skinned people they just assume you don't belong there and you expect something bad to happen and one day her son's like we're down the street at some like wrecks or like playground I think or something they had, like that I think there was another famous person that lived in the, uh, Chris Bosch lived okay. in their neighborhood and he had like a huge gym like a okay. crazy ignorant gym and <laughs> they had a key so they could use it anytime so okay. they could walk there by themselves and like you know unlock it and go play or whatever and yeah, she had the realization they were walking by themselves and that they might get stopped. And Well, she told them no, oh. that they couldn't go at first. She was like, no, you y'all can't go because it was like at night. It was like later in the evening. And she was like, hell no, y'all can't go. So then the next day when Dwayne was there, when she wasn't around, they asked him and he was like, yeah. And it was like even later than when she told them. <laughs> and so for anybody who, you know, is in a relationship and you're raising kids together, you know, your or kids anyone are who diabolical. Yes. Or or have parents, you know, the one that you yeah, need to you know ask to get the stuff you want. So she was <laughs> shitty because she's like, I already told them no. And they're walking. And then you can you can finish. Do you want to finish? Or no, oh, you can I just told you. <laughs> I'm just thinking they're about stupid, um, just that that tactic, because it's it's so it's well. Effective. And everybody has done it or has, if you've not done it, it's been done to you. You know sure. what I mean? I feel like probably everybody has. Oh, yeah, definitely. I know out. my kids have. And mm-hmm. I, sometimes I even know and I don't care. It's like, that's fine. If they I'm say so yes, tired. fine. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> but it, so she ends up being like, it's breaking it down to Dwayne. Like, look, these are two black kids at night in a neighborhood where there aren't black kids with a key because they he even he may mention that the key may or may not work even. So she's looking like Nick, you just sent our kids down the damn street at night in this affluent neighborhood where they're going to be they may or may not be able to get He's into had this money thing. for too long. Yeah, like you get disconnected from yeah. the optics of how that looks. You know what I'm saying? Like you get disconnected from how, you know what I'm saying, those optics look or whatever. So I just felt like you know, she was instantly going there, whereas there, it, there was like a little bit of a delay for him. And so they ended up going and sure enough, there were the police. Yeah, yeah, like they were actually trying to figure out where they were. And didn't one of them, did they run? One of them took off or something. I want to say one of them. Or was that when they were walking their dog? I don't know if this was a separate one. I got to be honest, like on, on my second listening to this, I didn't get all the way through. That's OK. So at one point, <clears throat> I, I don't remember if it was this particular one or if it was another one, but... Um, they ended up taking off running when the police stopped them. Oh. And she was like, we have talked about this. She's like, I have black man drills with these kids <laughs> because they're huge. You know, for one, they don't look at you guys and see kids. No. They see grown men and they mm-hmm. see black men. So there's that threat instantly. And so she's like, we've talked about what you do. Because he was like, I think that Gabrielle was like, what do you tell your boys? Like, what have you told the boys about 
when the police stops them. Tell them, you know, their first and last name and give them your address. He, she was like, no, that's the wrong fucking answer. I'm Dwayne Wade's kid. <laughs> that's when you throw that out because, you know what I mean? And then you can say your name this and stuff. This will be on the news. This will be, yes. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> you have to basically use that as yeah. a... A buffer or whatever, I'm, just to yeah. kind of, you know, so she was just irritated that he didn't even think about it. So they did go to get him. That's and also was, deeply relatable. Trying yes, to explain a, a situation to um, a significant other um, that, that's not getting it. That's not getting it. And also, but he, I mean, he got, got, he got speed, it pretty yeah. quick. And then um, also trying to explain to your kids, though, situations <sighs> that. Can Especially escalate. when they see you as like being a crazy person. We're always as well. saying something it's to like, our children, oh, so they don't. They, you now? know, yeah, we're basically not even. We're not entities to them. So I just <laughs> kind of feel like, um, yeah. I mean, it it just kind of spoke to. No matter where you are, you think you can escape and outrun racism when you get to this stratosphere, like you know your fame and your wealth. But there's, I mean, it it's always going to rear its head, and and then there always be things. Um, that will re remind you, you know, and, until we fix it. Like, because right now it's not fixed. So I don't want it to feel like it'll just always be there. But until we make a concerted effort to fix it, it's going to be there. Yeah, which is probably going to be a while. A while. So, uh, a little while. Yeah. But yeah, so I was just like, my God, that is just, uh, it's, it's funny you can't buy your, oh, that, because that was the thing too. Um, another quote was, you never age out of BS. No, you don't. And Definitely so not. just that if, if anyone listening is expecting, it's like, oh, once I get to, no. It no. was terrible, man. It's constantly, it's always going to be there. It's going to be a pile of it somewhere. Yeah, man, it's gonna it's gonna catch up with you. So yeah, I did. I it's heartbreaking, but also it was relatable too because I I've you know personally be like God, I, you know, there's hard conversations to come. You know, yeah. I'm already breaking some of that down with my kids, but it's like, man, this is terrible. I cannot. So yeah, I, I hated the racism part too. That sucks, but it's around. Um, and then let's see, what is the other parts? I actually, let me see. I think I had a nice quote for doubling back when you said about her sex positivity. Oh, okay. Um, let me see if I can find it. Oh, she says, so repeat after me. I resolve to embrace my sexuality and my freedom to do with my body parts as I see fit. And I will learn about my body so that I can take care of it and get the pleasure that I deserve. I will share that information with anyone and everyone and not police the usage of any vagina but my own. So help me, Judy Bloom, Because she also <laughs> learned a lot about her sexual, or her, the way her body worked through a book, which was a Judy Bloom's book. That reminds um, me books. of Chelsea Handler, too. I don't remember her book that good. Mm, Hello Vodka, it's me, Chelsea. No, I haven't read that one. She I read like, My Horizontal Life, I think, but I okay. barely remember it. Okay. Yeah. It's just the themes. Okay. she talks about, you know, how much, how influential that book was to her, too. Yeah, man. Because she's also someone who's just very candid about her enjoyment of her sexual life. Yeah, and there's, you know, it's it's all good, but it, but you definitely get pigeonholed, though, I think, you when you do that. So, which is messed up, you know. I, I, don't, it's, it's, I don't always love that part. It's worse than not doing that. Yeah, man. And then, let's see, what else? What other quotes did I like? You already said the one about um, us doing it anyway. That one was fantastic. Um, oh, how about this one? Especially since we're doing a podcast, people underestimate the power of conversation. Oh, 100%. Um, of saying things out loud. Um, mm -hmm. Very, very powerful. It is, man. It's out there and it's in the it's in the universe and the ethos. Um, I was then. noticing, too, like just um, this week, you know, just our family, you know, going through what we're going through. And um, sometimes I'll be listening to someone and I'm like, I don't really need to hear this right now, but I'm realizing they need to say it right now. Mm, that's hard. It is. Woo. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. <laughs> for so, me, anyway. Sometimes, and, I mean, yeah. I feel like for, I don't know how it's easy for anybody. It's not it isn't. It's it's hard, but I'm like, okay, I'm just going to be here and listen to this because I know you need to say it. Yeah, 100%. But also at the same time, too, we all need to work on getting to therapy because I can't be everybody's therapist. Well, and that's the thing, too. That is definitely a thing. It's <laughs> but like, in this moment, yeah. Yeah, I definitely think that's true. Um, and then, too, I like the quote that she had, uh, moving into self-love and letting go of harsh judgment of others and yourself. Ooh. Give yourself a break. Take time to explore what makes you happy. Other people don't have it. Don't have a chance if you don't even know. And I like so, the fact that she even called herself out for this. Uh, she the whole throughout the whole book. Yeah. She was pulling her own card. Yeah. And I, and I did like that because there's that self-awareness and that growth. Um, that was just it just 
and just knowing you can go from that to there like I like like and just knowing like one looks better than the other like do I really want to be the person who's just like always saying this that and the other negative shit and always critiquing and and, and, and as opposed to because I mean everybody has the shit that they're working on like everybody and nobody really ever knows what those things are and it is super easy to sit back and, and you know make judgments but you're less likely to do that I feel like when you're happy and when you're um and you feel good about yourself you know what I'm saying like and okay with making like I don't know I feel like there's always this pressure to be perfect too yeah and that's that's dumb she did that to herself a lot too she I would definitely say she considers herself a perfectionist you know what I mean like she wanted to be perfect student yeah the whole athlete, like real competitive her dad her mom and dad's relationship was very interesting too it was because that was um (laughs) God. Yeah, what were your thoughts on that? <laughs> Sorry, it's not funny. I'm just thinking about the fact that when he was trying to marry his side piece, like he divorced, you know, Gabrielle's mom and was trying to marry his side piece. And then she like, but didn't want to tell his mom he had divorced his first wife. So he flew his mom to the wedding. Like it was like flew her out and was like, didn't tell her that it was for a wedding. It's like, so are you going to tell her you? And then I would I would have definitely felt away if my dad missed my graduation for his honeymoon to his side piece. Mm. Like, we wouldn't be good for a while. Like, of course, as my dad, we'd have to make up. But it's like. You're going to get it. You're going to get. But you know what would have softened the blow if he had paid for my college? Maybe then I could let it go. Man. Well, that's true. Coming out of college <laughs> I don't know debt if free, he did speak. or not, but like the only way I would probably let it go is if he had paid for the whole thing. But if not, like that's really. <sighs> well, and you know, you're dead wrong. And I want to say it all happened in the same month that like their divorce was final. He got married and she graduated like all at mm-hmm. the same time. Boom, boom. I was like, wow. So he was. But I'm surprised they're still together. They are. Yeah. I was I guess. like, wow. It's like, mm-hmm. oof. And she basically was like, it's water under the bridge now because, you know, shit she's like you move on you know yeah. what I mean or you know you you move on or whatever and she's a fantastic grandparent from what I understand as far as in the book that part where like so. she was like showing off her house like it was hers though like already before anything that was wild like to find out bold as it's hell like oh yeah your house is beautiful it's like because I can't tell black ladies apart and it's like, uh, it's like what are you <laughs> How do you know how my house looks, though? Right. And how? he was like, oh, so my husband brought you to my house when his side piece was there. Right. Got cool. you. Got cool, you. Cool, 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 cool. Ugh, that is so disrespectful. Golly, <laughs> man. It's hard to hold on to that and respect that's in those moments. the whole thing, too. It's like, okay, if you got to cheat, cheat. But it's like, or why don't you just end this relationship and just start your new one? Like, since it's just. Why are you so terrible where you eat? It's, we it's, live here. We have our life here. Our kids are here. Like, that's mad disrespectful. And you know if she had done the something, like, brought her side piece up in your house where you're paying the mortgage, like... She probably would have got murdered. Yeah, probably. You know what I mean? That's usually what happens. Yeah. <laughs> murders. Yeah. Murders. But yeah. Murders. Um, yeah. It yeah, would, that it was crazy go that route. Well. And her, you know, that's that's a hard thing to get through. That was, once again, she kept it very real. But it sounds like her mother was a very interesting person. She did seem interesting. It was, but it seemed like she she was willing to put her own personal like goals and aspirations for herself to the side to provide a comfortable life and some opportunities for her, you know, her kids and stuff, too, because she seemed like she probably would have just traveled the world just kind of based on how her, she loved art and stuff and theater. And so she liked to take her kids around. And yeah, like she bought tickets to Alan Avey every time that was in town. And good old Alvin Avey yeah, Studios. Well, she man. loved ballet and all that stuff. Oh, I also wanted to before we close, that was the um, her description of the crack epidemic. Like whenever that comes <laughs> yeah, up in man. a book, like that's one of those things where it's like we kind of need reparations for that that too Man. like there was a really really good piece on john oliver about the housing discrimination because they always talk about like reparations for black people it's like well we can't do anything about slavery it was so long ago he's like okay well there's some recent stuff too but what about crack y'all <laughs> <laughs> and crack was like i said a very concerted effort like all of that i mean it's so boring like to shift through it like in the 90s and, or in the 80s but like all that stuff with like the first george bush and ronald reagan and oliver north like they had a plan like they were like we're just gonna buy all this cocaine from from the Contras and, you know, distribute the it in the black community. Yeah, <laughs> distribute it, like, let the mob, like, distribute it in the black communities and it'll be, in, and we're not going to do anything about AIDS. So it was, 
Yeah, crack definitely sucks. And it was a um, a pivotal part of our history, especially when you think yeah. about just the generation before that yeah. compared to how things are. The community, reverb, yes, it's still the reverberating, reverberating now. Yes, like it's, like it's not gone. Effect. No. I mean, we talked about Miss Pat. She's she's yeah. raising, you know, her. So Miss Pat, I mean, if you listen to this podcast, you already know who we're, we're talking about. Fans. Yeah, man, we like her. She, what, what episode was that? Miss Pat. Was it the second one? Mm, I feel maybe. Like, well, I should. I yeah, should know catalog, episode we? three. I know, right? Episode three, because if we consider, yes, it's episode three officially. Okay. But um, our first full episode. But she basically is still taking care of her niece's kids, who are the direct. You know. Mm-hmm. She calls them the crack babies. Yeah, man. Like she's still taking care. So yeah, I mean, it, it's the reverb is still being felt throughout the community and stuff like that. But I, I really, really liked this book. I would definitely recommend it. Yes. Um. Uh, five wine glasses. Oh, you didn't even let me ask. Oh, I, I knew. I know. That's what I'm saying. You know me, friend. This yeah. Is, that five, was, and I, I like how she recommends. She's um, she was talking about getting back after a breakup. She recommends red wine or tequila. Never together. What do you got in your cup there? Red wine. Boom. I have not. Cheers I'm you, not Gabby. breaking up though. No, but it's just fun anyway. Like you just, know, it's it's good for lots of occasions. It is not just you know not just that. It's actually got a lot of what are those little tannins that are good tannins. for your heart. I like tannins and antioxidants. Yeah, man. Red wine will do that. But I I. Yes, I definitely would get it, give it um, the same five glasses of red wine. This was a super enjoyable book. Um, I think that Gabrielle is somebody who I think, do you, would you say she's like America's sweetheart kind of like when yes. people, or is it black America's? Probably black America. I feel America. like, Can I she mean, be everybody's with black letter? America, but I think she's, um, what was that she show just, she wasn't, was she on America's Got Talent? Oh, it was one of those, man, with uh, Simon and all them. Well, I know Terry Crews was on there. Cause Terry Crews, I think Simon, too. Um, whatever. I think she's pretty universally loved. Yeah, uh, I think I think so, too. Yeah. I really like her. I like her daughter. She seems to have a really cute family. And um, and I like her hustle. You know, that, cause sure. that was one of the themes. I think ambition. Like, she's unapologetically ambitious. She's like, I always wanted to be good at sports. I want to be good at school. I want to be good at act. Like, there's no mm-hmm. apology for, like, being like, I like the the chapter she had with Big Bank, Take a Little Bank, where she's that talking about good. the finances and talking about this stuff before you go into a relationship. I don't think I was really taught. There's so She's giving a lot of game. Like, before you're Agreed. Going- uh, so yeah, our sound engineer was reading us like a clip basically saying it was America's Got Talent. Yeah. And um she ended up leaving the show because of the toxic work environment and yeah. it was related to, you know, racism. It wasn't just yeah, it was a yeah, lot of part stuff of, where sure. it's just like, you know what, I'll just get a job somewhere else because yeah. she can. But it's like you gotta tackle that because not everybody else can just go get another job. That is very true. And I and I do appreciate the fact that she she pipes up because mm-hmm. she also is a big proponent for Planned Parenthood because like I have mentioned in a past episode for a really long time, Planned Parenthood was the only health care. I had access to because I did not have actual insurance and I, I think she does a lot to support Planned Parenthood so I will always shout them out because Planned Parenthood is I mean it's I mean even with breast cancer a really close a, a friend of hers ended up with breast cancer and she was a big advocate for breast cancer and oh, they do wow, free screenings yeah. and stuff like that at Planned Parenthood and so that's clutch I mean you know if you don't have insurance a fucking mammogram is gonna run you uh, it's not cheap y'all I'm telling you it's not and so you know, if that's the difference between early detection and not, you know, you, you have to support places that are providing these basic, you know, health care services for people who and may not have And it's cheaper. Them. Yes. In the long run. Like, yes, it uh, is. It's, it's more boring, but an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Yeah, man. I like it. But yeah. So, yeah, man, she's she's pretty lit. I like her. Um, so let's see. I think before we take the break, I wanted to invite our listeners to email us at thefabpodcast at gmail.com. We want suggestions from you guys as far as books you'd like to hear us talk yeah, about. Yeah, enter for a chance for a $500 shopping spree. I know. Go ahead and lie to them. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> go ahead and email in your hopes and dreams because they're not coming true here. Not if that's what it is. Um, also, if you have, <laughs> if you have, um, I, I, I like the idea of just, um, Stranger than fiction stories, meaning like a story that's like um, unbelievable because we've talked about the fact that sometimes reality is way more interesting and crazy than fiction can be. So if you have any stories like that or just, you know, random conversations about parenting fails, anything super interesting. So we're going to take a quick break, you guys, and then we'll come right back. All right, guys, we're back. So it's almost the end of the show. And what we're going to do now 
um, is spin the wheel. So we like to spin the wheel just to kind of pick what we're going to talk about next episode. So let's spin it. All right, it's spinning. And yes, okay, guys, it has landed on Mary J. Blige's documentary. What is it called? My, my, my life. life. Oh, that was simple. Yes. Okay, my life. My life. Yay. My oh life. my gosh, I love this. I love this. I don't know who doesn't love Mary J. Blige. I mean, you have to be a, the um, ultimate hater. Actually, thinking about um, your younger brother, he used to always have a lot of comments about her, actually. I mean, he does not count <laughs> okay. for the record because he is the ultimate hater. I, every time now, I just think about because he always talked about it her. It's because she's blonde hair. He no, just it was the cat black suits. When, it's the combo. It's the cat it's suits. It's the cat suit and, and the blonde hair. High boots. He doesn't like he her personal like that style. I he doesn't it. like her hair. And guess it's what? It's very like from Players Club. Listen, we don't like him, yeah. so there's that. Yeah. And also, we're we're, no we're going to hold him her to show up and no, sing. and no, and we're doing this episode too, so that we can, you know, have a fake ass. Yeah, we need a break. We just we got we got to have space. these. We have to have these ones where it's like gives us a chance to live and breathe. So, mm-hmm. but I actually um, documentaries are like a book you watch. It is, and I was going to say you recommended it, which was cool. Um, so I'll be excited to talk about that too, because MJB man, she listen, she gave us lots of bops, lots of memories. I mean, we kind of uh, grew up with her, so it'll be fun to kind of revisit that. So hopefully, you guys and the come fashion. Back. Listen, all of it. She's a vibe, man. She is. She's a whole vibe. So come back and vibe with us and MJB, and we are going to yeah, do it. Get the hell out of here. Bye, bye. Yeah. Okay. I never yeah. Under- under- underestimate the power of conversation. I know. I am. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm fully enlightened now. So, uh, yeah, guys, we yeah, are nailed it. <laughs> I know, right? So, we're back from our break. Boy, um, what a break. That was a good break. Uh, <laughs> we are going to... So, at the end of our show, we do... This is our last segment. It's not called anything. Oh, yes, it is. Yeah, it's almost the end of the it's show. It's almost, almost the end of the show. Bump. That was a fun sound effect for y'all. Y'all are welcome. Yes. I think that's it. Is there anything else you wanted to say? I mean... Your body belongs to you. Nice. I like it. And you know what? Stop comparing yourself to other people, too, because that's misery. (laughs) You know what I mean? It it, is. That can be hard, but also, you know, try. Yeah, and read a book. (laughs) And read a book. All right, y'all. Well, I think that's it. We're going to get the hell out of here. Oh, and we're the reason that it was illegal to teach black women. I know, because we just be talking and shit and just ideas and comments and (laughs) all all that dumb shit. Right. Shut up. Hell. (laughs) Right. Shut your ass up. (laughs) All right, y'all. We're going to get on out of here. Peace. Peace. See you next time. Before we go, we must give thanks to our sound engineer, Eric Dizzy from Dorian Keith Media, to Urban Nerd for providing our music. Buzz Viral Marketing runs our social media. And legal services were handled by Trazen A.M. Atkins. If you like what you heard, please feel free to join us every Wednesday for another fake-ass book club. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you guys for listening. You can check us out at thefabpodcast.com. Please subscribe, rate, and review our podcast wherever you're listening right now. We want to hear from you. Come put it in our life. Thanks again. And until next time, peace, love, and the fake-ass book club. We out.